Before we discuss the rearrangement of communities in response to global change, just a detail, by global change, we consider both change in land use and change in climate. So let us start by a general observation, the decline of specialized species within both animal and vegetal species in Europe as in other continents. What is a specialized species? It's a species that has resources, ecological resources in terms of climate, of a diet, that are rather narrow, very specific, as compared to generous species, which are more plastic and can use a great number of resources or live in varied climates. So specialists species are, of course, much more sensitive to global change, to entropic pressure uh, that uh, very quickly mean that the conditions in which they live are unsuitable. If we look at bird communities in France, a decline in the abundance of specialist species has been noted, both in farming environments or in forests or in built-up areas. And conversely, generalist species are benefiting from this uh, disappearance of the specialists and uh, their numbers are now larger. And the same occurs for uh, thermal specialized species that are specialized in a given climate. Those who like cold climes or those who like warmer climes are on the decline. The difference between the two can be seen as an indicator of impact of climate change on bird communities beyond uh, the impact of land use. This is quite a typical example. This is the yellow hammer, a species that likes cold weather and that has been declining sharply in France over the past 25 years. So locally, within a given community, one can calculate an average specialization index for all of the individuals in the community. Each species has a specialization index, specialization to a given habitat, for instance. And what we do is that we average out for all of the species, all of the individuals identified in the community. And this results in the fact that communities are less and less specialist, composed of more and more generalist individuals. And if you look at how this is reflected in gradients of habitat, there's a very powerful impact in the fragmentation of habitats on specialization. The more fragmented, the lower the specialization within a community. And the more uh, the habitat is degraded, the more the specialization index decreases. So there are direct effects of uh, changes in land use on the specialization of communities in their habitats. There are a few winning species in these communities, especially generalist species, and a great number of losing species, uh, the numbers of which decrease over time, especially in sectivorous and granivorous uh, species. It's more recent. There's been a great decrease in these and the presence of these small birds because of recent changes in the common agri agricultural policy. So within a local community, this is a, a forest community, as an example, there's going to be a shift between a large number of species with a few individuals, as was the case in an average French forest 30 years ago, but perhaps less now less species, uh, perhaps the same number of individuals with generalists who've replaced specialist species. And this type of reorganization within bird communities uh, can be observed both in forests, in agricultural land, or in built-up areas with the same generalist species across all of these habitats. This is known as biotic homogenization, much greater similarity between communities in different habitats. So this reorganization can also be observed in the face of climate change in terms of uh, thermal characteristics of the communities. So one can calculate the average thermal index for a community, as was done for habitat specialization. And what one can note is that in France there's a latitudinal organization, predictably, of the thermal specialization of bird communities. In the, around the Mediterranean, communities like warm weather with a relatively high thermal index, and the more you move towards the north, the more there are species who prefer colder climates, and there's therefore a gradient of uh, the average index in communities. But over time, locally, in a given location, the average thermal 
index increases over time because uh, the climate is getting warmer and that communities are responding, are adapting to the climate change with uh, increasing numbers of individuals who like warm climates in a given local community. Conversely, there's a shift uh, between the climate and the change in the community. The community cannot change as fast as the climate does. So on the European scale, this is reflected in a kind of shift of uh, the thermal composition of communities towards the north, which is different from one country to another. The shift is much stronger in the north of Europe than in the south, but there are also shifts that are different in taxonomic groups. Birds and butterflies do not move at the same speed, which means that there will probably be major issues of uh, uh, the break in the trophic chain from uh, the uh, to, to, to the end consumer in the food chain. So in this shift, there's a delay of the communities in responding to climate change and also a shift towards the north. What, how can this be explained? First of all, the shift can be active with a displacement or dispersion of individuals of each species, uh, thermically oriented individuals who move towards cooler climates, towards the north, but there might be also a passive shift. The average index increases merely because on the local level there are less individuals of uh, the cold-loving species and this results in a variation in the index. As for the mechanism of the delay in displacement, first of all perhaps there are insufficient corridors for dispersion to allow these species to move around geographically, to move northwards if their natural habitat is not available on the way up to the north. This might all be caused by the trophic shift uh, between birds and butterflies, although birds, of course, do not only eat butterflies. That is a possibility. It might also be that the climate goes much faster than the intrinsic biological capacity of a species to move. In smaller birds, the natal dispersion, the distance between where they are born and where they breed is just a few kilometers. If the climate moves 10 kilometers, but the bird can only move 5 kilometers, there will be a shift and that will accumulate generation after generation. And finally, the delay is perhaps not such of a disaster if it is caused by local adaptation of individuals to a warmer climate. For the time being, we have not yet been able to measure the adaptability of birds to locally changing climate, but perhaps there is more balance uh, towards in, in the new climate because individuals have adapted to the new conditions. And finally, these rearrangements of communities may have consequences on the way ecosystems function. And in order to demonstrate this, we often use predictive scenarios to predict, to forecast the evolution of communities and the evolution of the functional traits of the species within these communities. We're going to examine the functional diversity and see how it can be expected to change under a climatic scenario or land use scenario. This is an example for communities of birds in Europe for the year 2100 um, for the climate and land use, where you will see that there will be evolutions in the functional diversity of these bird communities. And diversity will decrease in northern Europe but will increase in the Alps. So rearrangements with new functions that are going to appear in some places, functions are going to disappear in other places, and which are most certainly going to modify the global operation of ecosystems. And we will see in future if these models are confirmed um, as we take measures in the coming years about the composition of the bird communities. Mm -hmm.